we're on number 46 of the list. Number 46 of the 48 ways. And over there reads, Lome almanas lalame. You have to learn in order to teach. Now what does it mean to learn in order to teach? What does to learn mean? You're always learning. Life is learning. If you haven't learned, then you're stagnating. Yeah? Learn in order to communicate your growth to others. Don't grow only for yourself. Grow for all of us. So whatever you learn, whether it's formal wisdom, like the 48 ways, whether it's informal wisdom, like you went touring, ask yourself, how would I transfer this insight, this appreciation, this growth to another human being? How would I articulate? Thinking in that way gets your potential out of you. Now, to focus your attention, can you imagine if you were a widely circulated columnist? There were 50 papers waiting for your description of Amsterdam, of Israel. Can you imagine? You had to write, you had a deadline. This coming Tuesday, you have to give a 10... Thousand word essay or one thousand word essay as to what a yeshiva is about. And they're going to print it in the New York Times and the World Telegraph and whatever papers they wrote, right? Now do you realize Zang, you're looking around, who's here? What did he say about pleasure? What, 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 what was that? Let me see. Is that scintillating idea? Is it something that disturbs me? Do, do you see that you're weighing, thinking, focusing? Because you have this audience that is waiting for your words. You can't just tell them, well, I was there, I sat, and I left. <laughs> no. Right? So there are these powers. How much are you using it? Not too much. That's a waste. That's keeping you from really getting on with this business of living. Okay? How do we do it? So the first of the how is that, look, you got to get the feel of your personal Desire. Now, I told you this idea if you were a correspondent, yeah? But that's coming from the obligation. What about your desire to teach? So let me ask you something. What, what would happen if you walked down the street and uh, you really met a Martian, right? And he says, I come from uh, some galaxy, some universe, and I'm here to tell a message to the people on Earth, yeah? Now, what is the first thing that you do? So, well, well, let me take a paper and pencil. Are you from Mars? <laughs> well, what universe did you say you were? Hey, where did you learn English? What? Well, never mind. Right? You know that you want to transmit it. Yeah, you don't say, well, ah, you know. <laughs> do you want to make sure you say this isn't a, a, a... How do I know you're, you're a Martian? You look a little weird, but... <laughs> yeah. no, but let me see the tentacles. Do they really work? Yeah. Okay, let me describe you. Wait, wait a moment. Before you say anything, let me describe. What's the mouth look like? What, you know, right? How do I show them that I was really there? We have this desire to transmit the information, and we have the power of focusing them. Right? All right. Number two is that appreciate that part of our drive, and that's why I give you that illustration, part of our drive is that we want to be part of humanity. We don't look at ourselves as... It's not only the Martian, Achnes <laughs> monster, any phenomena, yeah? We, we don't want to live for ourselves. We want everybody to know about it. We like the idea of being the one to break the news, yeah? But a part of humanity, you want to share what you know, if it's of significance, with humanity even on an anonymous byline. In other words, they won't say Joe Blow correspondent, yeah? Let's just say from an authorized source, a verified source. So number three is, now take that to the step that everything you learn, use that drawing. Don't live for yourself. See the growth and share. So in order to do this, that everything that you learn, you have to be, is you have to focus on three things. Number one, define it. Get a clarity. What did you learn? Take a look at the Martian. What is he? What does he look like? What is he saying? That's the first thing, right? The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to check out. Am I sure? Do I understand this? What exactly are his fingers? It's tentacles. What do I mean by tentacles? Well, they're, they're very subtle and they're, they have no joints. That's it, yeah? 
And the third step that you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, how do I describe this? How do I articulate? How do I focus somebody exactly what those fingers and those slanty eyes or those slits or whatever it is that when it goes for eyes? And what's the difference? You know, what's up? So whatever you learn, do the same thing. All right, so number four is, so whenever you finish a book, you just read a novel. Fantastic. It was fascinating. Yeah, what did you read? What happened? What did it teach you about living? That you have to meet your enemy at dawn? What does it mean? That love is a devilish thing? What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, first... Articulate what happened, what are they saying, do you understand, does this make sense to you, how are you going to articulate, this is what I learned from this novel. Number five is that, of course, if you were giving a lecture tomorrow, if you had to give, you explain a book on biology or what you learned out of a novel, you had a, a English class or a class in wisdom or whatever it is that you were cracking the book today in order to teach tomorrow, and that's a terrible way of teaching, yeah? But if it was there, then you would do this naturally. Now, unfortunately, you don't have a class set up tomorrow for everything you learned today, yeah? So you can't do that just from the natural juices. What you got to do is sort of play the role. Think, if I was going to teach tomorrow, what would I say about this class of the 48 ways? What did I learn? What did a man say? What did he say about learning? Living is learning. Learning is living. What, well, what, do I understand that? Is it, do I agree? Don't I agree? Is it a false? Is it true? Is it right? Is it not? And how am I going to present it to someone? If you had a particular person in mind, it would help you. Even if you're not going to present it, what would I say? What would he hear? So, really, if you intend to teach, which you should, you are an idealist, you see. 99% of the people who are doing things, like going to college, you're going to become a lawyer. Every one of us, something in us, we want to help all of humanity somehow, somewhere. <laughs> it's part of our drive. Yeah? So think of it in those terms. Be real. Intend to teach. If it's something worthwhile, share it. Yeah. I say no idealistic reason figures into what they're doing. I didn't say that they're doing it completely idealistic reasons. Yeah? But they do take along their idealistic reason and put it into what they're doing. If I'm going to be a doctor, it's not only because it's a well-respected uh, profession and you can make a lot of money at it. It's also because I want to help human beings and help them get well. Yeah? I'm going to be a dentist or a lawyer. I mean, those are the professions that people usually think somehow I'm going to help humanity, right? They all plan to go into law to somehow change the, law, the laws on pollution after they make a lot of money in criminal and civil law, etc. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not a money-making field. But they figure if I'm a lawyer, sooner or later I'll join an organization and help them really get those laws, right? Pardon me, are there any lawyers in the audience? Yeah. Are you on? <laughs> Peter, isn't that part of the thing? Sooner or later you're going to get to those pollution boards, right? <laughs> okay, um, number six is particularly in wisdom, because wisdom is particularly important. It's really living. You see, to know uh, that there was a Martian who came, all right, maybe we should start arming or let's get the more laser rays. What are we going to do if they invade or what kind of lifestyle? But it's really a threat, threatening thing more than do you think that the Martian appreciation of music can enhance Howard's? It's an interesting concept, but, mm. <laughs> but happiness is an obligation. You are really living for pleasure, my friend. Any one of these things can change a human life from one end of the world to the other. So it's particularly pertinent information. It's not as, as shocking, it's not as sensational, it's not as strange, right? But these things change a human being's whole existence. So when you're learning wisdom, use those three tools. What did I learn? Do I understand it? 
is this, do I have it clear? And how will I articulate? To whom will I teach it? Number seven is that if you actually take the trouble that you learn something, you share it, you teach it, it doesn't have to be a formal classroom situation. You learn something, you find a way of getting people to listen because people like to tell you things that they know, but very few people want to listen to you. So what you got to do is fascinate them and get them to listen. And if you actually teach, and you teach enough, it becomes second nature. Anything that's important, you think, bing, dong, okay, who will I teach? It becomes second nature, just like shifting your gears. A clutch, gears, you know, you learn how to, to, to drive a car, it becomes second nature. You remember when you had to get out into traffic, you waited there for interminable time until there was so much blowing in the back that you lurched out and the traffic stopped. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> But now you, you know exactly how to, to bluff the guy in that you're going to go and you see who's weak so that you can get into the traffic lane, you know. <laughs> you got so the same thing goes with if you learn in order to teach and you actually teach. So that means that you learned in order to teach because you got it. You'll become its second nature. And whatever you learn, you'll be thinking, mm, mm, mm. You won't have to pause. Number eight is to do it well you should heighten your motivation. We have no problem when we meet the Martian. We have no problem when we see the Loch Ness Monster. Because your motivation is coming from sensationalism, which the body is very good at. But when somebody tells you happiness is an obligation, your soul says, this is mind-boggling. Happiness can be mastered. Love can be mastered. You can become a lover. A lover of mankind. Mind-boggling. The soul says, hey, pay attention. Bai says, gee whiz, is this a way of spending an afternoon? The Martian, no problem. That's a way of spending a whole week. Yeah, if he'll spend the time with you. <laughs> you'll figure out something to ask him. Yeah. Happiness is an obligation. Can't wait to get out of here. So you see that you have to heighten your motivation, your your sense of the need of this in order to really do a good job. Now, imagine if you met someone bleeding. Would you help him? If he's hit by a car, you couldn't pass him by and live with yourself. Is that right? Yeah? Now, which is more miserable? A person who is in a rut? A person who is miserable? A person who is depressed? Or somebody who's bleeding? Cut your finger, or you're depressed, or you're confused, or you don't know what you want out of life. Do you see it's all together? He cut his finger. He's, he got hit by a car. All right. We'll get him to the hospital. He'll live. That's it. But if we cut our finger, everybody, the body runs. Yeah? It doesn't matter who he is. He's miserable. He's arrogant. He's counterproductive. He's confused. He thinks he's, he's the Messiah. Ah, let him go to the devil. Wrong. Identify. He is in worse shape. And in Judaism we say that the most destructive, painful, and contagious disease of all is ignorance. People destroy the ones they love out of ignorance. They hurt their own children, their wives, their parents. They just don't know how to handle it. Is that right? They wouldn't do it because they had a cancer. Ignorance? What? Boom. Smack. Swang. Yeah? People commit suicide out of ignorance. People kill out of ignorance. People waste their lives out of ignorance. They don't do it because they broke a bone or have a, a paralysis. It's a terrible disease. It's destructive. This is what's going on in the world. It's ignorance. People want to do the right thing. You see, you don't, you're not into that pattern. In Judaism, we say men are good, not men are bad. <laughs> you're not born with sin. You're born with a desire to do good, to have pleasure, to attain. Human beings are striving. It's just ignorance that perverts them, that makes them look into term, terms that are counterproductive that defend themselves against their parents by saying, I hate them. Yeah, it's ignorance. They don't know how to, how do I get my father to stop saying that I'm an idiot and I'm a fool and I'm no good. And I hate him. It's ignorance. He doesn't know how. So if you realize that, that people who are beating you up are ignorant, 
then you know what you got to do is teach them cure the ignorance. Cure the ignorance, and everybody knows that living is a marvelous experience. Human beings are marvelous beauties, and pleasure is what we're after, and there's no point to being stupid. <laughs> cure the ignorance. Stamp out ignorance. Therefore, you got to teach. B of this is that it helps tremendously if every piece of wisdom that comes your way, you ask yourself, what are people suffering not having it? What is a guy suffering because he's traveling through Europe and he doesn't think of himself as being a reporter for the New York Times? He's suffering boredom, lack of direction, lack of self. Is it, do you see that? All right, so let me teach him to learn in order to teach. Who would he teach? Etc., etc., etc. All right, number nine is that always remember, always focus on the fact that we are idealists. I mentioned that, but it's a point in and of itself. We are idealists. We do want to help humanity. We do want to be a doctor, a lawyer, to help humanity. We, if it, we had an opportunity to press a button and get rid of all of the atomic weapons and violence, how much would you give me to press that button? Huh? Every one of us says, me, let me, let me, right? All you got to do is you see this button over here, you press that button, no more hate, no more violence, no more bigotry, no more atom bombs, no more pollution. Huh? Huh. We all want it. Very, very much. You see that? If we believed it could be done. If you're in touch with the fact that I do want to help people, why wait until you're a doctor and, and you've gone through uh, medical school and uh, internship and residence and uh, then you're going to help people? Help them today in very serious ways. You know that they say that 80% uh, of practice medicine and family physicians is uh, placebo prescriptions. You know that? People are basically miserable. Now, if you can give them the placebo, and at the same time teach them how to be happy, right? Then you really cure them. <laughs> or teach them what they're living for. You really cure them, right? Okay, here's your contribution. You got a piece of wisdom, help humanity. Share. All right, number 10 is realize when we have clarity, we must teach. Uh, you, you just can't sit on it. So to focus your attention about that, I like to use the example. Everybody here knows how to play baseball, right? What if a guy gets up at bat and he holds the bat upside down? You get it? He's trying to hit it with the narrow part of the bat, <laughs> right? And you're fascinated. You're going to stand there looking at this guy, yeah? Swing once and twice, yeah, right? All right, you can laugh at him. You can point it out. That's not really you. You want to reach out and tell the guy, hey, look, wrong, counterproductive, <laughs> try it the other way. Yeah? When we really have clarity, and again I say, when you see your neighbor beating up his children, you're going to have this urge to tell him, hey, look, this is counterproductive, they resent you. You'll have the urge. Of course, you're not going to mix in because who knows? You might get a sock in the jaw. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the end of it. <laughs> that's right. Who are you to tell? All right. But you know you have the urge. You see it. It's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah? So realize, if you don't have the urge to teach, what does that indicate? If you don't have the urge to teach this, learn in order to teach. If you don't have the urge to teach how to be happy, Take a look at a room of guys. You don't have the urge to teach them. What does that indicate? Clarity. Have clarity. Just say, why don't you try it? It's just part of us. Right, number eleven is that just caution. In order to learn how to teach, you've got to really define what teaching is. You see, don't learn in order to recite. Don't learn in order to preach. That's not teaching. So what is teaching? Moving people? That's, that's inspiring. So what is teaching? What does it mean to teach? Teaching is reaching. Reaching an independent human being. Not moving him. Not getting him all excited. 
overwhelmed, but transferring your appreciation, your concept, your clarity to another human being. That's teaching. Reaching him in the same way that you understand, that you've been reached. Am I making sense? So when you learn in order to teach, how do I articulate it in a way that will focus on it, understand it, make a decision of their own, internalize it, and take it even further than I am? That they will really be happy. So, even though I'm not the master of being objective when I'm dealing with my children, I lose my temper, but I'd like my friend to appreciate when objectively, when I'm talking to him, that don't lose your temper, don't insult them. You don't accomplish a thing by calling him names. Because I see it clearly. I want him to see it clearly, and maybe he's more of a man than me, and he'll take frustration better, and he'll really treat his kids like they should be treated, even though I don't. Reach him, reach him. So that's part of the articulation, and that is one of the whys, because if you do that, you will reach yourself. See, by reaching in, you will reach yourself. So learn in order to teach means pay attention to how do I transfer this so that it's his own concept, that it's something that he appreciates and he will do. Number 12 is, the best is to get practice. Go actually teach. One, two, three, four. Try. All right. So the first time people will laugh at you. The second time they'll argue with you. The third time they will curse you. The fourth time they will thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. But maybe by the 50th time, you'll be get good enough that somebody will actually say, you know, you really helped me. You really taught me something important. And it's worth an awful lot. That, that, that recognition is worth an awful lot. You understand? But you know you're going to get better practice. So don't wait until you're a perfect teacher. Nobody became the world's greatest teacher <laughs> without flubbing a few times. Anybody here teach? Yeah? Did you improve a little bit along the way? <laughs> we improve a little bit along the way. Do you understand? Number 13 is, keeping all this in mind that we talked about uh, what teaching is and how to motivate yourself and and what we want to share and all all of this in mind now whatever you learn in wisdom whatever you learn in body of uh, the Talmud or the Mishnah or the 48 ways or how to love humanity or how to love God so focus on it plan to teach it these are important concepts what does it mean to know what you're living for? Do I really understand it? To know what you're living for. Bottom line, the most important thing, the thing that makes the meaningful existence. What am I living for? If you don't know what you're living for, then you're a zombie. What, what does that mean? You're a zombie. You're not really alive. If you don't know what you want, you're not really alive. Do I agree? How would I transfer this to somebody who's a zombie? You know a lot of zombies? I know a lot of zombies. I turn into one every half an hour or so. <laughs> How about you? Yeah. Number 14 is that if you are being taught, here we have a class, right? You're being taught, that's an excellent opportunity. Study the method. All you got to do is take good notes and understand what, what, why do you say this, why do you say that. Every teacher tries to be organized in some way or another. I try to be organized, right? So this is a lesson plan. Might not be the best. But you can at least objectively you weigh. Is this a good lesson plan? Is this the way that I would teach it? Doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way you want to teach it. But at least you have something to study. What is it? The first, the definition, giving a focus, the steps of bringing people to realization. What is he doing? What would I do? Will it work? Mm, it's a good plan. Go ahead, friends. Use it. <laughs> teach. Teach. Live for, for your friends. Live for humanity. Live for your children. You want to teach them. Someday you're going to want to teach your children how to be happy. If you're taking a class how to be happy, you say, you know, someday I might have to use this. Wait, wait a moment. You know, Take notes. Of course you're not going to work at happiness. But your kid might get depressed and you want to help him. Yeah. <laughs> Take the notes. File it away. When he's, uh, what do you say, 15 is the time of depression? No. Nah. Wait until he's 17. I'll dust off the notes. Make a note. <laughs> when my kid is 17 years old, look up how to be happy. But don't wait until he's 17 and then take it out. You won't even understand. Yeah? 
review it right after class so that you see that it was good notes, I understand it. Can I teach it? Can I articulate it? As if you're going to teach tomorrow, yeah? Then it's best to review it on schedule at least once a year. That's the Jewish concept. Review it as if you're going to teach at least once a year. Because if you're going to wait until he's 17 years old, yeah, you're going to take out the notes. Well, what do you say? What is that? No. Doesn't make sense. All you got to do is take out some of your college notes. <laughs> you know, just a year ago. <laughs> right? Certainly three years ago. You know, you won't even know what, what, what is that stuff? Yeah? It's going to work the same way. If you view right away. Number 15, the same applies if you're learning on your own. You just heard a class, you go to some classes on wisdom, but if you're studying the book of Pirkei uh, Avot on your own, then what you have to do is ask yourself, what did I learn, how do I teach? You have to make your own notes, as if you're going to give a class. Number 16 is for living. Whatever you do, you're going to college, you're traveling, you're going to work, you're applying for a job. You're going to teach your son. You're going to teach humanity. New York Times magazine section. Sunday. They want a report. You focus down. How should you ask for a job? What should you say to the man? This is something that is relevant to a lot of human beings who are going to go through this world. Yeah? And to my children. Okay. Learn in order to teach. Number 17 is every day that you've lived. Have you lived yesterday, today? Have you lived? What did you learn today? If you haven't learned something, you haven't lived. What are you going to teach? If you can't teach it, you haven't learned it. Last year, did you grow? What's your name? Scott, did you grow last year? No. Yeah. Was it one day's growth? Was it every day a little bit? Every day a little bit. You see that, yeah? Maybe some days you slid back. <laughs> okay, but you, you learn something about life. We slide back. <laughs> yeah. So don't let it happen haphazardly. Now, how can you do that? Ask yourself, what can I teach about what I did today? Every night, take five things, five pieces of wisdom, five insights, five items of growth. Write it down. Ask yourself, what did I do? Is this valid? Do I agree? Is it, do I understand this? You know, the Martian. Do I understand this? Yeah? And how would I articulate it to someone to get him to move? That he shouldn't make my mistake or he should learn from my success. This is a way of living. This is a vitality of life. This means that you're awake, that you're growing. So number 18 is that a good way of doing this is actually keep a diary. Now, there's different ways of keeping diaries. One guy keeps a diary, the events. John fell off the roof today. <laughs> Dude, do I remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember John. Hey, wow. Well, it was a good thing I kept the diary. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you understand? That's the concept of keeping the diary. So I'll remember what happened then. Another person writes a diary, dear diary, he's communicating. That's one line. He's communicating. He has his friend. His diary is his friend. Dear diary, I was very hurt today. They insulted me. They went off touring and left me behind without even knowing that I was still asleep. What a tragedy. I sulked the rest of the day. See, he's expressing himself. Here, the idea of keeping a diary is what? What's the idea of keeping a diary? What did I grow? No, what did I grow? What can I teach? What is important for living? Living. For me, for my children, my wife, my friends. Because, my friend, you learn a fantabulous amount of things every day. You're just not in contact with it so that it gets lost. Living is learning. Every experience is a learning event. Being aware is learning. It's just that we focus for a moment... We say, mm, that's not the way to act. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Oh, but then, zing, it gets swallowed up in a lot of nonsense, a lot of, a lot of zombieism, and it just goes down the drain. Now, if at night you learn to recapture, recapitulate, focus on it, every night you're going to come up with an awful lot of your, your growth and living. 
Number 19 is that, look, in order to give you an appreciation of how important it is to keep that diary, so I focus your attention, and it is a, I, you know, we're friends, and I really think that every person here is gorgeous. I believe in humanity, and you, human beings, gorgeous. But to give you a little dose of hard shock is, look, you're all 20 years old, 20 and above, right? Now, if you had to lecture for a thousand intelligent people about what you learned about living in the last 20 years, what would you teach? Think for a moment. What would you teach? What are you going to stand up there and tell them? You can't know truth. That's what you're going to teach. Love is, is, is a happening. I've not found it. What did you learn? What did you see? You've grown. You've lived. Woo! Keep a diary. Five things I've learned today, just in case. But to live, this is not the way to live. This is confusion. This is something that's draining your energy. If after 20 years somebody says, go ahead, teach us. Teach us what you learned about life. Ah, ah, not good. Know it. Know it. By every day, focus down. You'll get good at it. You'll know what you know. You'll know what you learned. You'll know it's important. You'll know it's worthwhile. And then they say, teach us what you learned in your 20 years. You say, yeah, how many days do I have? How many days do I have? I mean, I, I teach you what I learned in 20 years? <laughs> and, and how long? You want me to do it in an hour? In 10 hours? 20 hours? <laughs> How many days do I got? Do you see that? Isn't that a much better feeling? I wish upon you that much better feeling. Just one more thing that I want to tell you is that number um, 20 is that this works good in problem solving too. What do you mean in problem solving? You're fighting with your parents. You don't know what to do in business. You're, uh, you don't know what to do with your kids. They're, they're crawling along the ceilings. They're wild. They're wasting their lives. Yeah. Teach the problem. You will find the solution. What does that mean? Define. What is the problem? My father says that I am a wastrel. I'm wasting my life. That's more the problem that we're into, right? He says that I am using only a tenth of my energy, which indicates that I'm a parasite and an idiot and a nincompoop to boot. Yeah? Now, what is the problem? So let me teach you the problem. The first thing is, I do not have much self-confidence. And when he says that, I secretly suspect that he is right on all counts, which disturbs me very greatly. And I figure it must be his fault. And teach the problem, define it. It's so good in solving it. <laughs> you understand? Well, this is my problem. And you can learn from it. By articulating, by making it intelligent, instead of an emotional and upset and relaxed and hit them back and defend yourself, yeah, you'll do an excellent job in solving your problems. By just teaching the problem. Am I making sense? Okay, so why do we need this? Why do we need this? You see, we are part of humanity. You might as well get some mileage out of it. If you're living for yourself, you don't have the energy. Live for all of us. If you are the New York Times correspondent, if your reports are going to be circulated all over the world and you're going to Europe, you're spending your time in Israel and they're going to write about it back home and in Australia and in South Africa and they're going to translate it to Russian, yeah? And you got all this coverage. Now you up your living. Do you see that? It gets your potential out of you. We are part of humanity. They weigh on us. This is a way of getting some mileage out of it. It gets you more powerful in applying your understanding, your analysis, your attention, your motivation, etc. Use it. So, an assignment is, please, write down ten of the most important things that you have learned in your lifetime that you would teach at Harvard University for the whole student body because you have been invited. They're going to listen to you for now.
search yourself and see how painful it is, but how important it is to yourself. Try. Number two assignment is those ten things. Go through the process. How would you teach it? What is it that you learn? Do you really understand it? Clarity. How would you articulate it to an audience that's listening? To make them, not to recite it, but to transfer it. They're willing. They're listening. You have a tremendous reputation. Yeah. Right? The third assignment that I would give you, after you do the first two, is tonight, before you go to sleep, write down five things that you learned today that you would teach the same audience. Start preparing for that event. Thank you. You have been listening to the 48 Ways to Win.